It's no secret that I enjoy the magic of a simpler time and yearn to return to it. I'm like if you put Izzy's Matt Pat and some undiagnosed mental disorder into a blender. Delicious content, but at what cost? To be your tipping yourself. I do. I do. Butt lovers. First of all, thank you so much for 100,000 subscribers. I can't even express to you how hype I am. Over the moon is an understatement. Anyway, today I'm reading again, and instead of Cowboy Smut, which I do way more than you'd think, and it's very fun, we are visiting the educational series that all started with Dragonology. The original Dragonology that I'm holding before you came out in 2003, and if this cover isn't indication enough, let me spell it out for you. It's badass as shit. Let me tell you a bit about the plot and then some art immersion moments. What do I mean by immersion moments? The very first page. Let's just get into it. Uh, we just got a letter. I wonder who it's from. Right off the bat, fancy boy handwriting. It feels so real in my in my little hands. Dr. Ernest Drake, St. Leonard's Forest, Horsham. I don't know, that's somewhere in England. April 1904. Dragonology is the proper study of the dragonologist, or study of dragon lore. Oh, he said, he said it, said the thing. Let's get to the real why of this letter. Why is this being addressed to us? Right here, quote, Perhaps the most important thing is why such knowledge should never be used against them. And above all, that dragons, like so much of the flora and fauna of this fleeting world of ours, are rare indeed, and it would be a shame to see them disappear forever. A real environmental mentalist lesson. Ernest Drake is just a really cool, chill guy who wants to protect the dragons. And he also makes it very clear in this letter that not everyone is like this. There are some big, like, dragon bounty hunters. So I have set this knowledge down, student dragonologist, not that you might seek out and destroy the few dragons that remain, but that you may learn about them and indeed help them to stay concealed. For the wise learn much, see much, know much, but disturb little. I love this man. I've loved this man since the very moment I got this book as a child and I still love this man. Something really interesting about revisiting this is as a kid I actually never read these regular schmegular pages. Yeah, this is one of the boring pages. I'll show you what I mean in a second. I only really cared about the envelopes, cards, decoders, like interactive tactile things. But reading through this, this is a really fun page too and I've read it for the first time even though I've had this book for about 10 years. Sorry, 20 years. It's been 20 years. This refuting the skeptic section is so funny because it is just so unconvincing. Some people used to think the platypus, the, pla the platypuses weren't real, but th uh, they are so, so yeah. Real copy, real co Oh, does that look real to you? It doesn't matter, it is. So therefore, the dragons might even be real too. Let me read one line from the skeptic section. Recently, Henry Stantley learned of another apparently mythical animal, the Okapi, while searching for Dr. Livingstone. With the giraffe's horns and a zebra's legs, it has so intrigued scientists that they are determined to find one. Yet there is not one who is willing to mount an expedition to bring dragons the scientific attention they deserve. A lot to unpack here. This book shares real information? Uh -huh. Henry Stantley was a real explorer, and according to the Okapi.org, yeah, they have their own website. The Okapis built their own website, and you think and you think dragons can't be real? Take that, skeptics. Checkmate, atheists. Anyway, Henry was the first person to bring this knowledge to the Western world. Although Google only credits Harry Johnston for some reason, but the Okapis that built their website, I, I assume no more. Let's learn about the five Fs of Dragonology. We have field work, foresight, forwardness, frankness, and fatalities? What? You're gonna be very forward thinking, you're gonna be honest, you're gonna die, you're gonna die for your craft. No, actually what it says in the little description is, unless these are avoided, the student will make little progress. Yeah. Yeah, that's true of about everything. Can you imagine going into a job orientation for like Burger King and they're like, yeah, and just please try not to die out there. I'd be like, I'm quitting. Now it's easy to be distracted by this huge map of all the places where dragons been. But let me direct your attention to this flap right here. Let's close these off again. This right here, don't get burned when you buy a hat. The latest thing, get Dr. Drake's heat proof flame away hat. Heat tested to a thousand degrees for 15 pounds. What a steal. I just realized that's his own invention. He put an ad for his own thing in his book. Earnest. That wasn't very earnest of you. And right after he was like, and don't die out there. And you know what will help you not die? Giving me $15. I don't even think that hat works. Surprise ASMR time, my fellow dragonologist. Cause we have a wing specimen. Oh my God. This is my favorite fucking part. <laughs> Another one. 
I don't know what they put on this to preserve this 250 year old skin specimen so well, or how they have enough to put in every single book, but I'm gonna cherish it with my life. This here is one of my fave specimens, the specimen of a marsupial dragon. Oh cool, what's a marsupial dragon? Oh, oh, you got me started now. You got me started. You should not have gotten her started. You would like to know what a fucking marsupial dragon is. She's breaking her fucking knees. Kellyanne, if you're out there watching, I'm unpacking our beef right now. The moment you heard I was doing a dragonology video, you were like, oh, she's gonna expose me. Yeah, yeah I am. Back in the day, my best friend Kellyanne and I were writing a book together. We each had characters that were us in the book and we were picking out dragons that our characters will have. So Kellyanne got this one, the coolest one, like arguably the coolest fucking one. And she insisted that I have this kangaroo dragon, one of the few that can't fly and is really weak. And I was like, can I have like another cool dragon? Like, like maybe I can have this one. Maybe I can have this one or this, like literally any other one. But she insisted, no, this one's perfect for you. What does that mean? And I'm a pacifist and I, and I hate confrontation. So I was like, yeah, I'll take the fucking weak ass kangaroo dragon. It's messed up. Moving on from that. Did you know that these dragons can read and write? like dragon tales, which I'll eventually get to for a lore video. I can already hear you. Look at this. This is the dragon language. Here's something that made me feel really smart as a kid and as an adult. So I took this here text. You go back to this page. Look at this. It's something written in the dragon language. Do not fret, I translated it. And what it translates to is, the bearer of this book is a friend to dragons. Help them if you can. E. Drake. So apparently he wrote this for the friendly dragons, which makes me wonder why he signed it. Is he on a first name basis with these dragons? I'm gonna freaking eat you. What's, what's this? You know Mr. Drake? He's my fucking boy. All right, I'll, I'll protect you, but only because you know Ernest. All right, come on, come on. This actually checks out because canonically, Ernest was close enough to these dragons to rub their shit on his face. Ew. A remedy for scaring away savage beasts, dung is invaluable in trips to wild regions. Rub daily into the face. It is a cure for many skin conditions. Cool. And what's dragon dust? Their dandruff? Their scabs? What is what? Oh, so actually right here, the substance can be collected from the cave walls around the nests of breeding mothers. When a female dragon is being pleasured, that this is, I can't even, I, the book ends on the most depressing note I've ever seen. Quote, only a few become master dragonologists. Such are reflected in the mystical dragon's eye. Their task is to conserve and protect those few dragons that remain, for who knows how many shall last another century, with the human population growing at such an exponential rate. And with them, how many more of Earth's creatures will become extinct until people start to say that they never existed at all, except in our imaginations. Ow, 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 ow. But look! I am reflected in the dragon's eye, much like our buddy Ernest. Wait, is it canon that this is an actual dragon's eye? Cause that's a wild last page. You know, I know what'll give this book some wow factor. The end. Now here's my favorite part. Just how many ologies there are. Because as a standalone book, this is cool enough, but they expand the world so much that there are 15 main volumes, of which I have seven. In chronological order, there's Dragonology, Egyptology, Wizardology, Pirateology, Mythology, Monsterology, Spyology, Oceanology, Vampireology, Alienology, Illusionology, Dinosaurology, Dungeonology, which is actually a collaboration with Dungeons and Dragons, Nightology, and the latest edition Ghostology, which came out in 2020. I gasped when I saw how recently this book came out. And I just had to grab it to see if the vibe of this matches the ones that I grew up with. But first, who really is responsible for this? The author is Dougald Steer, and here's a picture of him. His branding is fantastic. Like, isn't this exactly how you expected him to look? Full of whimsical academia. So we have him and all the wonderful illustrators and editors to thank for bringing this series to life. But every book is from a completely different perspective. And I wanna talk about the ologies I have in front of me, including some of the companion books I have as well. And then we'll even explore books in a similar style, not affiliated with the ology books. One that I would even consider a full blown ripoff. Egyptology opens with this letter. Look at how lovely that is. This book was written by the great aunt of the person who sent this letter. The great aunt's name is Miss Emily Sands. Emily Sands. 
I thought Drake being the last name of the Dragonology author was a bit on the nose, but dude, you're interested in Egypt and your last name is Sans. Hi, my name's Athena Video Camera and I'm a YouTuber. Are you serious? You see how that can take you out a bit? I may be Athena P, but that doesn't make me a urinologist, okay? And while I'm out here being honest, let me just say I've not changed at all since I was a kid because I can't read the words on this page. I keep getting distracted. Look, look, look. So cool. I wish I was more interested in the actual story because, spoiler alert, the writer of this journal went missing. Gasp. Miss Sands went missing. Am I supposed to be crying and shaking and have a chill going down my spine? Because I cannot focus with all this interactive stuff. Like, sorry about your great aunt, but look. Look, I got a little game. I too am getting lost in all this sauce. Don't get burned when you buy a hat. Why is there another hat advertisement in here? Doug Old Steer is running a campaign for big hat. No cap. I mean, yes cap? Uh, let's see the reception of this one because it's based on history stuff I am not well educated on. So I don't know how accurate this is. Whilst I am fully aware that I am fair years above the intended audience age range, me too, I feel it necessary to say that though the information was clear and concise, it felt simplified and made up of things I already knew. It is a lovely colorful introduction to Egypt and its history, but on occasion it was simply too childish. It couldn't even hold my attention span. How is it too childish if I'm like, uh, this is a little high brow for me. I've no doubt anyone with a larger desire than my own to learn about Egypt will not reach for this particular book. Yeah, like I didn't even know there were actual facts in these books until today. Me personally, my favorite was Wizardology. I even had this handbook that I filled out with spells back in 2007. I'll get to these big brain spells in a second. But between these visuals... Look at this. There's a little Dragonology book on the desk! Huh, they said this is a fairy flag, but it kind of looks like the skin of a marsupial dragon, don't you think? Freaking check this out. Check this out. Wow. Like, you're not even ready. <laughs> and the fact that it's written from Merlin's perspective. What's in here? Oh, it's another book. It's another book to read through. I tend to lean more towards the magical ones in general. Like, don't get me wrong, all the books are super fun. But I think it's kind of funny that every other one is based in reality a little bit. DRAGONS! A real life place. WIZARDS! Greeks. I'm one, we're not all that. And the gods we used to worship are quite frankly problematic as shit. Now for the handbook, oh my god. There is a section to keep track of mystical beasts you meet. Here's another call out post, cause apparently I met a dragon, 2008, in our school bathroom. The dragon is also a human, age? Nine. About my size in human form, one of my friends convinced me she was a fucking dragon. And I, I feel like I really deep down inside knew that wasn't true. I'm just a pacifist. I don't want any problems, but everyone wanted to fuck with me. It's also alarming that it said clue scratch marks. I feel like maybe she did grab my arm as proof and was like, does that hurt? And I was like, yeah. Dragon. You know, human nails can hurt too. We laugh about it, we're chill as fuck. It's just like, I really should have stuck up for myself more. Now here's the best part. I wrote my own spells. This is actually not a spell, but a poison. It's for more power. You put Sprite and two cherries and co cocky sugar. How devious. This spell is called lightheaded. You have a lot of smarts, that is true, but I'll take some away from you bars. This one's my favorite. This is for more potatoes, and it's also for levitating. It's covering a lot of bases there. The words that you say are levitato potato. Levitato potato. It levitates and gives you potatoes. I'm literally too powerful and nothing can stop me. Now let's look through some of the post-it notes I took for mythology. Lady Hestia Evans wrote this book, and I can't think of a less Greek last name, but in her letter she mentions a uh, Mr. Patakis, which is hilarious because my last name is Priftakis. What are the dang odds? I feel like usually non-Greeks, when they're coming up with a Greek-sounding name, will just like add opolis to the end of everything. But this dude right here is like my distant cousin. Now we have context for another story John Oro gives us. In his his words, a grim and terrible warning. Don't you think you're Oro exaggerating? <laughs> anyway, to summarize, he basically tells us that the shit we see in the margins is him telling his story. So while he was out looking for antiques, he explains that he got greedy. He even ends the letter with, Zeus, forgive me! Love John Oro. Obligatory map section, which also includes a family tree. And the cutest little picture of me. Let me see what you have. I'm going. No! Oh my this was my favorite thing. Pandora's box, do not open. Ah! 
Oh my god! I wish there was like a sound effect. I wish there was like a little voice box for when you open it. Oh, we also have oak leaves. These are used for oracles. So you ask a question and like a magic eight ball, you just throw it. Will I ever hit a million subscribers? Oh God. Guys, I'm not even joking. It was two on the dark side and one on the light side, which means likely. In this envelope, we got some cards. Look at how freaking slay she is. I want that head to toe outfit, seriously. So spoiler alert, our margin writing buddy Oro got the Midas touch. And look at these last few pages turning to gold. R.I.G. Oro. Should have read the fine print. Monsterology, let's read a little bit of this note. It's Dr. Ernest Drake again, he's back. He also writes, dragons, see left, have not been discussed in this volume as I have dealt with them extensively in other works. Yeah, yeah, I read Dragonology. I know, buddy. I'm so glad he's back. I love the ologies Drake wrote because here's the thing. He just wants us to care for these creatures. He's not like, ah, I'm lost. Ah, I'm dying. What do you want me to do about it? I'm reading the damn book. It's too late. Your trauma dumping does nothing. I love that Ernest doesn't like that. I can trust him. Speaking of which, I haven't read this in forever, but this apparently follows Ernest Drake teaching two children and going on like adventures with them. I also made this bookmark as a child, apparently. Dragonology rules with a little Z at the end because that was very hip and cool to do. I also drew this one like eating a bunny or something. It was really, it's really creepy, kind of off brand. I need to reread this one day. Maybe like there'll be a part two to this ology video. Back to monsterology. Map. A single unicorn hair. This page brings me back. This page alone, the art, Look at this one, it's so bumpy. It's so freaking bumpy. I wanna carry this around with me and just like, oh, I love it. Arguably the best last page of any of the ologies. Look at this. Prehistoric Phoenix Parasite? A piece of shed Jaculus skin? Yeti. And this is apparently a scrap of spell casting parchment for attracting mermaids, but doesn't it look awfully a lot like the marsupial dragon skin and the fairy flag? It looks very similar. The way my disbelief is suspended right now, you guys should be very proud of me. Oceanology, look at this. Map page. On this post-it note I wrote, you gotta see, S-E-A, <laughs> this. Now this is something that is very unique to this book. How did they even think to do this? I rolled a six, an I. Oh, you play by like rolling it and then you just have to draw whatever you roll and you, you get to build like a little like sea creature. Oh my God, I have not read this book enough. Honestly, I was skimming through this one and just getting distracted by the pictures as per usual. There's a lot of fun stuff in here. So I'm guessing you want to know the lore of this one. Like who wrote it? What happened to them? Um, apparently they were cursed by Poseidon. This literally never would have happened to Ernest Drake. Now for the moment I've been waiting for, Ghostology came out in 2020 and already, already, yeah, they still got it. They still got it. Let's take a look at this letter. This is from a ghost hunter by trade, and in parentheses, a good one at that, who is accustomed to strange and inexplicable occurrences, but something about this book has always frozen my blood. The letter, there was also these guys. So the ghost hunter is how we came about the book, but it was actually written by Lucinda Curdle, who uh, is super dead. The bitch's obituary is right here. She has these eerie messages scribbled about, not to be read before bed. This must be stopped at once. Learn about ghosts at your own peril. And I love the publisher's note. This publisher does not endorse a belief in ghost spirits, poltergeists, or any such unscientific phenomena and would like to suppress the idea that this book is haunted or contains communications from the other side, presenting it as merely an interesting curiosity. However, common sense dictates it is not recommended to allow this book in children's bedrooms at night. The publisher cannot be held responsible for any spectral, audible, or inexplicable frightening events that may occur in its presence. So even in the note where it's like, this is not real, they still don't want to break the illusion and have to be a little bit ominous. It's so cute. I love that. Ooh. Never let them catch you on camera. If they do, go blurry. <laughs> go blurry mode. That's so funny. Oh, map. I know it's a cute detail, but it just, it angers me. There's a page missing. There was a page and it says, The dead shall keep their secrets. 
Boo, what the fuck? So rude. I wanna know what this page said. I'm not reading any of the other ones, but I wanna know what this one said in particular, cause I can't. Now here's my favorite little detail and I've never seen this in any of the other ologies before. Do not open, this is your last warning. And there's a seal that's closing the page shut cause it's just so freaking scary. So I'm gonna open it right here on camera and whatever happens to us, I'll see you on the other side. Ah! It's just haunted ships. Why is this like the scariest one? Ah ha ha, you opened the page. I am free. Ooh, this is fun. Look at this. There's little eyes that appear in the right light. I am free. You opened the page at last. When darkness falls, you're sure to see. If you wanted somebody to open the page, why'd you put the seal on it? Or was that from the guy who left the letter that was like, oh, strange occurrences, be careful. <laughs> Not my problem, bye. Like Jumanji type shit. Lucinda, you silly dead bitch. Good book. Good book. Regular picture, a smirky smirk. Regular picture, a smirky smirk. So those are all the legit ology books I have. And you can tell they're legit if they have this seal. And you can also just look up the list of books and see if it's not one of those, then it's a knockoff or somebody just inspired by the style. Just like in my Webkin's knockoff video, I grabbed anything ology adjacent. So let's look at these three and see which ones I love and which ones I Fucking hate. Fairyopolis, a flower fairy's journal. Already with the letter. We can see some fairies hiding behind these flower petals. I love this book. This actually felt like a really great nod to the actual ology and they did cover something that, oh look, a map. And they actually did cover something that the ologies didn't get to. So I, I think it's fair play. But what's this? Oh, it's a little bit of a fairy wing. They kind of dropped the ball on the last page. Like, where's my last thing? My last letter, my last crystal, nothing? Okay. This one's just a retelling of Alice in Wonderland. And to be fair, in this style, it is really cool. Not as many interactive things. You have like a little letter here. Oh, a map. Oh God, that's awesome. I want to put this on my face. Look at that. There is something at the end. Cute, 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 cute. It's a deck of cards in the style of Alice in Wonderland. Very appropriate, very cute. Now this one is just a blatant ripoff of Pirateology. It's shameless. It doesn't do it as well. And I know this for a fact because I was a kid and I was looking for Pirateology and I picked this up and I was so fucking upset. Look at this first page. Oh, it starts with a letter. Okay, you did one thing, right? Pirates in media with fucking Johnny Depp. Are you serious? I hate that. I hate that. What a way to take me out immediately. Let's learn some pirate slang. Booty. Good, at least you had booty in there. You did one thing, right? Oh, oh, uh, are you even gonna have a map? Another letter. A big letter. Who would write a letter on? Oh, Okay, you have a map, you did one thing, right? I'm so salty, I really want Pirateology. It starts and ends with Johnny Depp. How dare you? Tell me something like original. I don't wanna see, if I wanted Pirates of the Caribbean, I would, I would order Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm trying to read a fucking book here for once in my life. We're closing this one out with a song. And not to toot my own horn, but when it gets to the bridge, it goes kinda hard. I really hope you enjoy, I had so much fun with this one. See you next time, next week is Sophia the First Lore. Ready to dive into capitalism? Stay tuned. Song time! What the fuck do you know about dragons, Debra? They Deborah. can read, they can write, they can put up a fight. Hopefully not with me. I got their eyes so that they won't see your ignorance. Read an allergy. She Merlin's a wizard, he told me to spell Raising some potatoes and raising hell Read Anology I wrote this 60 years ago, but please send help What do you mean to less old men? These letters won't read themselves I want to read this woe is me. Like, call 911. What do you expect me to do? I'm just reading a Ernest book. Ernest Drake fucking rules. He doesn't get cursed because he's not a fool. That's what we need to read. Dragonology.